Oh, <laughs> Having been one that has now built <clears throat> two fish rooms, but also done various uh, synchronizations, various, what's what I'm looking for? Uh, various setups of air pumps using whisper air pumps and USB air pumps and different, all different air pumps on the market. I've probably used well, a large majority of them. Now, I've come down to though, on building a fish room, the way to go that I have found to be the most efficient way to do it is to use what is called a linear piston air pump. That allows you to build what we call a central air system or like a central loop, where basically you're, think, you're building a giant square, a giant circle of a highway for the air to travel through piping, and it does not put back pressure on the pump because then you have air drop downs to your air filtration. Now air filtration like sponge filters is my number one recommended way for filtering an entire fish room. Now <clears throat> purchasing a new air pump can run you anywhere from, we'll say a hundred dollars used if you're lucky to find one to 200, $230 for a brand new one. And that's for an air pump that's going to do 45 liters of air per minute. Now what I, in my recommendation, in my experience and opinion, a 45 liter air pump is going to run over 90% of fish rooms that people are building. They can handle a lot of filters. You can get bigger ones, but they are much louder. Now I was very fortunate that Aquarian Co-op sponsored me. Um, I guess they, they sent me an air pump for free uh, to test and to you know promote and that's one where I do highly recommend purchasing from is Aquarian Co-op. They have their 45 liter uh, per minute uh, air, air pump available. Now, I recently came in into possession of one. Um, I actually have it right here. It's literally the same size air pump that Aquarian Co-op sent me. Um, it's the Mito brand, which I think is like the same brand, just it's older, I think. Like they're all practically the same thing. But anyways, this is the air pump that I was able to pick up from uh, a local gentleman when I purchased a tank from him a few weeks ago. And uh, with that though, I actually got the air pump for free when I purchased the tank kind of a thing. So he said that the piston inside the pump needed replacing um, and it was about a $50 part, which it was. Um, and I can leave links in the description below where I was actually able to find the piston for this air pump. Um, but then it came down to though of, I've, I've never needed to rebuild an air pump. I, I never needed to do so, but I, now I had kind of the fortune opportunity to rebuild an air pump and to actually get it on video and show you what uh, maintenance can look like for this, how simple these are to rebuild. Um, and so as soon as I found the part, it was just a couple screws, easy to pop out, pop back in. And a word of caution though is, I noticed that after I rebuilt this pump, plugged it back in, confirmed it was running, it did run much louder and it seemed to not be as efficient. So I will say if you run into, if you purchase one of these pumps, you expect these pumps to last 10 to 20 years with like minimum maintenance at all. I mean, I've had mine running for two years now with no problem whatsoever. So this, I, in, for, to say, in the video, I captured how to rebuild it. Just caution tale is if you purchase one used and it goes out on you and you decide to rebuild it, it most, it's going to run. It's not going to run as high as efficiency as it was. But let's get into the video now uh, and teach you how to rebuild this to where I was fortunate enough to get a, what would cost me about a $230, $50 air pump now that will run a fish room. So let's get into the video. Rebuilding this linear air pump was actually one of the easiest things I have done in the hobby. It may look complicated based around because it's a mechanical machine, but honestly it involves removing screws and that's it. So to get into the main housing of the pump, there's four screws you need to remove on the outside of the housing. On the very top of the pump, you will find a single screw that exposes the filter for the air pump. As the pump draws in air to pressurize your system, it runs through the filter on the top and the rebuild kit did come with the piston and a replacement filter. 
So I decided to replace the filter as we went. So like I said, to remove the top housing, you need to remove the four screws in each corner. And using a simple Phillips head screwdriver, I was able to accomplish that in no time at all. It's a very you know, simple process. From there, just a little bit of pressure is needed to remove the top housing of the pump. And when removed, exposes the actual linear piston pump itself, you know, what drives the machine. So the important part you need to note here is there's two housings on this pump. You only need to remove one of them. On one side of the pump, you will find a green ground wire that is connected to the pump with the screw. Do not, I repeat, do not remove that housing. The other side of the pump will not have a wire. Those, that is the housing you need to remove. Again, four screws is all you need to remove, one in each corner. So once you locate the right side of the pump, I f you'll start removing those screws. I found my screws were tight that they started stripping using the screwdriver. So after I damaged one screw, I went and got a wrench that allowed me to loosen each screw individually without damaging them further. And the wrench also gave me the leverage because some of these were, I wanna say rusted in, but these haven't been used in so long. It took a little bit of extra leverage uh, to remove the screws. And I, so again, using a screwdriver in combination with the wrench, I was able to remove all my screws without damaging them further. Once all four screws are removed, using a flathead screwdriver, there is a notch in the housing. You applying a little bit of pressure was able to remove the housing where you now have exposed the piston itself that drives in the pump. Now removing the piston, I found it easiest to use a pair of needle nose pliers because it's difficult to get leverage in there to actually pop it out without using the pliers. But again, a little bit of pressure, pulls the piston right out, no trouble at all, and you can already tell that the old piston that needs to be replaced is dirty. Um, you, so using the rebuild kit, which I will leave a link down in the description below, cost me about $50. It did come with a new piston and like I said previously, a new filter for the pump. So once you unbox the piston, it is time then to replace the piston. The old piston is on the left, the new piston is on the right, and you can see an immediate difference that the old piston is definitely used, it's definitely worn, and it was it reasonable the pump is not working. To replace the piston, you literally just need to line the piston up with the hole and pop it in. It's, it does not take hardly any pressure, it's nothing complicated. It just, it seats in the housing with no problem, and because this is the piston that goes for the replacement, you will have no trouble, you know, putting it back into the housing. There's nothing special. Line the cover back up. And again, you're going to use the four screws you removed, put them back in the cover, tighten them down. And because now I was putting the screws back into the housing, I found that the screwdriver worked without issue. And once I had put all four screws into the correct location, I did use the wrench just to tighten them down to make sure that nothing happened during operation of the pump. And then to replace the housing of the pump, do the same thing. You're going to line it up and put the four screws, you know, back in each corner. But like I previously said though, because the rebuild kit did come with a, a new filter, I decided to replace it. It is no it takes no extra time, and here is a comparison of why I replaced the filter. Uh, the old one is on the right, new one is on the left. I could have cleaned the old filter and had it still function as needed. But like I said, since the rebuild kit came with the filter, it only makes sense to do a full rebuild, replace the filter. That way this pump will last even longer and have hopefully no issues once it's turned on. 
So once all housings are back on the pump, it's time to plug it in and make sure the pump is working properly, which I was happy to say this full rebuild was successful. So a big thank you to my wife uh, for assisting me being the camera woman, helping me film all this. So as you can see, it was extremely simple to do. You need two tools, maybe three. I say I went from the screwdriver to the wrench after I started scripting the screws, uh, just because they were in so tight. It's been so long since they've been taken apart. Um, so I used three tools, a screwdriver, a wrench, and needle nose pliers just to remove that piston. Um, but it's extremely simple to do. So if you have a pump and you're looking to rebuild it, I hope this video helped. I hope you gave you the confidence to do this because I went into this blind, uh, trying you know, to see how easy it was to figure it out and it was super simple. And I'm, I am not mechanically minded at all. Uh, but rebuilding this was extremely simple to do. So let me know down in the comment section below, are you running a linear air piston pump and have you ever rebuilt one. If you're running one, I want to know your experience with it. Do you like it? Do you hate it? If you have rebuilt one and you're continually using it, that's where I really want to know is, is it running at full capacity for you? And did it alter anything in your fish room? I'm always interested to learn from your experience. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you did find it informative, consider subscribing. It's free to you and hopefully I can continue to bring you more educational content. And also if you got value out of this video, hit the thumbs up. If you did not, hit the, hit the thumbs down twice, see what it does for you. But anyways guys, thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you guys in the next one.